Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we want to talk a little about the reproductive stages in corn. We've got a great opportunity right here. That we're by a field that's just about to tassel. And once corn plants get to that tasseling stage, here's where the reproduction really begins. Now, technically, tassel uh, emergence is the last vegetative growth stage. Then after that, uh, it's all about the reproduction in corn, and that means making kernels on an ear of corn. So the first stage that we get to after that tassel is we see silks emerging from the ear of corn. So the reason why we're talking about this today is because it's kind of interesting what happens with that corn plant. So there are these little silks. There's one silk that goes from each spot where there's going to be a corn kernel. And that extends out the end of that ear, the outside that husk. And the job of that silk is to catch pollen. So it catches the pollen, and basically once that silk gets fertilized, it, it sends something down all the way to where that kernel is going to be. Then the silk detaches itself from the ear, so you know whenever an individual kernel has been pollinated because the silk will detach itself. And once the silk detaches itself, well, what's going to happen to it? It's not connected to the plant anymore. It's going to die, so that's where we end up with brown silks in corn. What's interesting to me when you look at these silks, so you, you say, well, how many silks are there per ear of corn? Well, in a typical field, we'll have on average 30,000 corn plants per acre. And on each one of those corn plants, you may have 1,000 silks. So you may have 30 million silks out there just on one acre that all need pollen to land on each individual silk. So it sounds it's, like it's an amazing. awful lot of pollen, and you might say, oh my goodness, how does that ever happen? But they say there are several times more pollen than there are a number of silks. There's lots of pollen flying around. So if you have allergies, you're, you now know why there is no mystery why, uh, I mean, this, this uh, allergy thing happens because there's so much, I mean, literally billions of flakes of pollen out there even per acre sometimes. Yeah, we're, we're just crazy. talking about corn here, but obviously weeds like ragweed and something, they're doing the same kinds yep. of things. They're putting pollen out there uh, trying to fertilize and, uh, and reproduce. And when we look at the corn kernels, and once, like Brian said, once we get those silks pollinated, now we have kernel development. So what you'll see on that ear of corn, and, and we're used to seeing, you know, finished ears of sweet corn. That's kind of what everybody thinks about if they're, they're not a farmer uh, of corn. Well, it doesn't just immediately, as soon as that's pollinated, make this big plump kernel. It has to go through several stages where first it looks like a little blister where each little kernel is. Then they get milky inside. Then that milk becomes thicker and it gets to the dough stage. Then when that kernel kind of fills out and the moisture starts to go away, then it dents in the top just a little bit. They call it the dent stage. Uh, and, and finally, we reach physiological maturity that's where those corn kernels are probably 30 or 40, maybe even 50% moisture still. So they've got some dry down time after that too. So out in the field, farmers really watch for these different stages to gauge how long it's going to be before they're going to be able to harvest. Uh, and, and then as they're doing that, uh, they can kind of figure out, hey, did I plant the right maturity of corn? And you know, are we going to get to frost too soon? Maybe I went with too full season a product because with corn hybrids, there are some corn hybrids that could get ready in 75 days and others that it could be 115 days. And it, 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 there's such a variance there. Across the country, we look at historical dates and how much heat that we gather throughout the growing season to kind of determine, hey, if I'm in North Dakota, I might want a 75, 80 day corn hybrid. If I'm in Nebraska, I may want 110 or 115 days. Well, it's really important for farmers to know how long it takes for a plant to mature. It's important for the farmer to know about the reproductive stages. And it's also important for farmers to know how to control our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to do it on your farm coming up later in the show. <music>